Well, we made it here to Rockhampton, um, and we're in good hands. We're with the local survivalists. Is that, <laughs> is that what you call it? Survivalists? Um, yeah, bushcraft. Bushcrafters. Yeah, all that ancient living stuff. So, Malachi and Kai, what do you do? Um, well, I'm a local to Rockhampton in that region, and we run a business called Rocky Instincts, where we go in and teach ancient living techniques to schools and do workshops and anyone that's interested. Yep. And, um, get out in the bush and have fun. What do you do, Kai? Uh, I'm pretty much an adventurer at the moment. What these guys do on their sailboat, I do on my motorbike. So I'm just traveling around. I'm meeting like-minded individuals. My passion is survival in the outdoors. So anything related to that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're gonna, we've got a bit of an action-packed day today. We're getting some grub, like literally. <laughs> um, yeah. We're gonna, yeah, we'll, we'll just, just watch it, it'll just pan out. But uh, as we go further down the coast, we're looking forward to meeting people just like you two. You know, yeah. like we've come out of the wilds where there's no one. Um, so now that we're, there's people, we want to well, we want to find wild people, I guess. Yeah, mm. cool. Come to the right place. Yeah. <laughs> let's go, let's go have a day. Out. Come to look for grubs. Is that right? As you do. <laughs> yeah. so what, what's the what's the story, mate? You you've eyeballed this and you said that there was grubs here. How do you know? Yeah. So I've just been on a grub grub sort of craze lately, and once you get your eye in, you'll see there's these two very specific holes that are vertical above each other on a tree. On the on the right type of tree, like a smooth bark eucalypt like this. Yep. You'll see these very common all the way up, two vertical holes at the same distance. And that's the sign that the grub has actually been in here. And, and it, so, it, so even this would be that? that yeah, yeah, you're picking it already. That is a really old one. So I'm not sure how old, a few years possibly. And this is actually, when the, when the grub gets born, there's a bit of conjecture as to what happens in the first year apparently from my research, but they somehow make their way up the tree as a very small grub. Mm -hmm. And then they'll, they'll actually go to burrow in here and they'll, they'll make a little tent covering out of like silk and frass, they call it. Yep. And that's just to protect them while they burrow into that initial little hole. And then they go in and they eventually making like a little chamber inside there. Yep. And they live in there as a, as a, as a larva, as a grub, to a point where they're big and fat enough to then turn into a moth. And they'll, that's what this hole is, is when they actually come out. Sometimes it'll weep a little bit. And, and also the big one, like in winter when they're really active, you'll see the sawdust on the ground, which is pretty cool. Ah, oh, right. And that's a really good indicator too. See the, like the sawdust surrounding this like spider web stuff? That's what the grub puts in to protect himself when he first drills in. And behind that, see that there? That's the plug. That's like really fine compacted sawdust and there is actually a little hole in the middle. That's where he puts out the rest of his sawdust as he chews his little chamber. And eventually this will just fall off and you'll be left with that plug just on its own. When they're active around a tree that's got a heap of grubs, it's like someone's just chopped up a log on with a chainsaw on the ground. Right. Heaps of it. Mm -hmm. you, you, like if it's there, you, you will see it. Nelly, 100% sure in here. Always wrong before, but this would be the start of his... This is a one that's, a, I'm not sure how, maybe a year old. And he'll still keep spitting sawdust out of here. It'll fall down. Sometimes you'll see it hanging on the bark or on the, on the ground. But most typically in, in winter, you'll see that. And then as he gets bigger, this will be more and more swollen and then he'll be ready to, to emerge after a couple of years. Um, you could use an ax, I like just to use a knife. Yep. Um, less, less damage and yeah, swinging a... that's right. And normally that's all I've got on me, so... <laughs> I'll just say, we'll just pop in here, we'll slowly get into it. And you can see, hopefully, yeah, there's the sawdust coming out as he's slowly burrowing more and more. And what I'm gonna do is just open up that so that we can actually see what's going on. Nice to see you got your Scandi ground mora there. Mm -hmm. um, needs a bit of a need a few lessons in sharpening though, mate. <laughs> As you can see, you tend to need to chop a little bit, and there's like a little hard the tree sort of protects itself right where the damage has gone in. Yep, like a hard rim, but I find you can using a bit of leverage, 
you can sort of muscle through that. From from my research, um, all over the continent, um, grubs were prized, yeah. and just for that fat um, and nutrition, and for how I guess your energy, your calorie in, calorie out, how much, how easy they are to get when all you got to use is your eyes to see it, mm. and. Like we've nearly done all the physical work already to be yep. able to get this food out. And that's where he is. And they're always head down for some reason. So his head will be facing us and we need to get him out. So typically what we'll do is make a little hook out of a stick and yep. a branch and we'll poke it up and we'll skull drag him back out. So it's a fine line between popping him but then getting him out at all. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about as thick as you want it because there's not much room in the tunnel to get the stick past him. So we sort of don't want it much thicker than that and it, sometimes you'll thin it down a bit but that's yeah that'll work we'll see see how well it works up we we'll sort of feel him there and i tend to turn the hook a little bit and sometimes you can look at this and you might know if you've definitely hit him or not this one's I don't really want to snap it, but it's not, we need it to be, you can see how you need it flexible. Mm. So it has to go up there. Here he comes. Oh, wow. Oh, there he is. Yeah. He copped a bit of a battering, unfortunately, but not too bad. This size is good raw. Um, I quite enjoy eating them raw like that. When they get bigger than that, the skin's chewy and it's mentally just a little bit off-putting. It's even though it tastes great. Mm. But when they're small like that, it's sort of a nice raw and um when they get bigger cooked i prefer cooked when they're bigger so when they're what do you reckon the flavor is like they actually do have a eucalyptus flavor eh slightly because they are in the gum yep and but they i personally think what all the things you hear are fatty nutty creamy eggy that's the that's what i get out of it and the fat content it's really it's like it's buttery it really is creamy and it sounds like a crazy talk, but it really is enjoyable in that, for what that, um, how rich they are yep. in flavour. Especially once you get over the mental side of it. Should we see if I can get over the mental side of it? Yeah. Everyone, everyone's sitting here going, I'm just here to see him eat the grub. <laughs> Hurry up Aren't you? I, I, know, I know our yeah. audience. Yeah, he'll be nice. He'll be a nice little... little so bar. just leave the head behind? Yeah, I, um, I just hold it, and most people do that, just bite right behind the head. Yep. Um, it'll, and then just chew away and enjoy it. Like, actually savour the flavour. Like, look, it's easy to... Shave with the flavour. Mm -hmm. That's I, I think that's like. They're cute. That's a perfect. Yeah, they they're cool. Eh? They. I like the pinky. Maybe our audience would like to see Pascal eat this even more. We'll you want me to eat we'll, it? We'll get another one. <laughs> you get another one. Yeah. What do you reckon? Hmm, skin's pretty chewy. Chewy skin, yeah. I've just eaten something that a dog won't. Yeah, he's not silly food. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what it tastes like. It tastes a bit like sunflower seeds. Yeah, like oily. A touch of eucalyptus, plenty of fat in there. You yeah. can tell it's like... Leaves it on the palate, eh? like that sort of... Uh, the aftertaste it's silky. Of... Is it silky, the middle? No. It doesn't taste like what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, it tastes alright. You have to, there is that mental thing that you're talking about, eating yeah, the grub. Totally. There we go. Now we go, we're on, we're on, we're on. There he is. He's a plump little little grub. See how it's like got the yellow? That's just like mm. rich, rich fat, I believe. It's just. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, takes that little bit, eh? <laughs> the ordeal is over. That's <laughs> no, okay. First is the worst. <laughs> oh yeah, I could get into those if I was hungry especially. I like the yellow yeah. stuff on your front teeth too while you're going through this. Mm. Some That's good stuff. <laughs> okay, so we've done the raw grubs. Now we're going to do the cooked grubs. Malachi doesn't believe in big lighters and matches and stuff like that. We're going to do it the old-fashioned way. That's 
Mm. Awesome, mate. Well, How's that for a teacher? Very <laughs> good. He's a natural. Look at that. Like you've been doing it for years, mate. That was first. How long does it take? It, yeah, like yeah, five minutes or so. Oh, yeah. um, it all depends on the heat of the fire too. Sort of like anything, I guess. But you'll see them when they um they'll stretch right out, like um yeah, like a the accordion, and go really really long and tight. And that's and the insides will go like a quiche, They're sort of like cooked egg sort of thing. Grubs up. Is that a win? Not too bad. What do you reckon, taste-wise? Tastes like damper. Damn. Oh, ash and yeah, yeah. Totally different. Different from raw? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It looks like it has like sauce in the middle. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Is it focusing? Oh, yeah, okay. M maybe is the answer. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, eggy. Eggy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. It's a bit more bitter. Yeah, it's a bit more bitter. Yeah, maybe it's something to do with the... Or maybe because yeah. it's a bigger grub. Well, that one, yeah, because we ate smaller ones before mm. too, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's good. Mm. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> Pleasure. Would you live off that? I could, yeah. Definitely. I was saying that when we were at the dam. If you're hungry enough, you could definitely cook into them. I don't think that's going to replace some um, cheese and chocolate for me though. <laughs> <That's their laughs> what do we got, mate? Well, this is a big chunk of black obsidian. It's uh, it's from America. It's a natural glass, and it's uh, it's perfect for stone tools. It's a, uh, it's actually the sharpest thing known to man. Is the story actually sharper than an unused scalpel? The edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I should have probably warned you. It's everywhere. Just be mindful where you're walking. Yeah, yeah no, that's cool. It's a, it's very, very sharp. Um, and I, I like to show you. We're about to go for a walk, and I like to show you some artifacts from the old people up in the block up here. Awesome. And um, what I want to do is just show you quickly how how it works, how a rock breaks, and then when we look at what we've broken, it helps to ID what is actually what we're going to be seeing. Yep. So just quickly, when force, when when you break a rock, um, <clears throat> it's the way force travels through it isn't in like a straight line it actually when we hit it it'll come it'll actually turn into a cone and they call it a hertzian cone yep and it's a certain angle like 100 degrees and that's why i'm going to sort of hit it at a certain angle and maybe move it and it's also why i've sort of chosen a certain spot to do to hit as well and, and that's the so looking at where i'm going to hit the shape of the the, the the surface of the rock and the angle of the rock in relation to where i'm going to hit it all determines what comes off. Yeah. Okay. But for now, I'm going to give it a whack and we'll have a look at what happens and then we can know what to look for later. I'm predicting, hopefully, we should break it through here and the okay. rock, this ridge might come off all going well. Okay. Let's see how we go. Yeah, cool. We called it. Yeah, we, so, and that, that's one of the beauties of this process is it's predictable and when you follow the rules, it literally is like a set of instructions. You'll get you'll get what you want. Now here, some of the things we can see, there's two sides to this piece of rock in the sense of it's got a belly and a back. This is like its humpback, its ridge, and that's um, normally got other scars from where other bits of rock have broken off. So you're meaning these concentric circles when you say it's got the belly? Yeah, yeah. So sorry, yeah. The the belly is like um, this is sort of the belly here. Yep. And normally, because it'll always be like a bit of a, the rock breaks in a lens shape. It'll always have that dip. Generally, this is a straight one, but it'll always sort of have a hump here. Because when rock breaks, it likes to travel over a hump, over a ridge, <laughs> over a convex surface. And you'll always see artifacts generally will have that lens convex shape, because that's sort of by nature how rock breaks in bigger pieces and how we like to use the, the tool. And um, so on the on this side, you can actually see the exact point of impact. Yep. And that was where I hit it. And there's actually ripples. It's hard to see, but there's waves that emanate out from the point of impact. And and it's sort of smooth. You can actually see and track them back to the point where we've given it a, a whack on that platform. So this is something to look for when we're looking for artifacts. Exactly. Strike point. 
and that's what they call that's that Hertzian cone if you actually look at it it's got that it's hard to see but it's a little cone shape there they call it the bulb of percussion now if you can see a bulb of percussion on a rock that has a belly yep and the back with other flake scars yep you're pretty, pretty much guaranteed it's an artifact this is my pile here of rocks that I've been breaking here is a one I've broken it's got a belly yep and it's got a back and I've already knocked another flake off there yep and if we look closely it has got a bit of a bulb not an obvious right one. there right there that's where that was the point of impact it would have sat on the rock like this old mate would have come in and knocked off the piece just like we did then and you can look at any of these and follow those rules and be rest assured like you're holding something from ancient technology ancient history A lot of times when a culture would quarry they would get to an area like this where the rock material is, is present and they would get a massive rock and they would what we call spoil it out, knock off heaps of all the rough cracks, rubbish and they'd get a lot of, and that would cause a lot of waste so there'd be a lot of bits and pieces mm. laying around and then they get to like a piece that like that's good quality, I'm, I'll carry that now and I'll take that away so you'd find and then along the way they'd knock maybe one little tool and they'd use that and it'd get dropped near the house maybe. Right, yeah, yeah. And then eventually, you'll, they'll work their way down. It's like a Swiss Army knife. They'll take <laughs> lots and lots of flakes off. Then they're good enough to make a big one, a small one. Oh, that one might be a good spearhead shape. Make that one. Use this for that now. And there are heaps of different uses. But then eventually, it'll get to a point where it's this where it's used up and exhausted, the core. And then that would go on the ground. Yep. And we find them here too, like the exhausted cores. And that could be anywhere away from... It'll be away from here, definitely. But that it all would have started here where they processed and refined and got a something that's reasonable to carry out. I wonder I wonder how widespread these would be through trade in this region, because there's a lot of tribes all up and down this coast. And good point, and this is one of the biggest quarries in this area. Like apart from Quick uh Quick <laughs> Creek quarries, so that's why. Mm -hmm. uh, creek quarries, like where you just go and harvest out of a creek. And most of the ones around Rocky you'll go in and I can find like a like a flake. Or, or something that an old person's used that's rumbled down the creek over time. Nice. And, um, but this is one of the biggest ones in our area that I've, I've found. That's close, but that's within walking. Easy. Anyway. If you hit this off mm -hmm. and it comes off like that, if you want to take another one off, mm -hmm. you'll hit it here and it'll stop there again. Yep. So that's actually a, a not ideal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's another hinge there. And mm. then you'll get these, which are steps here. It's got like mm. a little 90 degree step. When you look closely, all this here is very typical of um, of use wear. Yep. So it'd be great to have a professional like, give you more information, but yeah, it's intriguing to look at that and wonder what it was for. Oh, Bloody humans! <laughs> <laughs>
So what have we got here, Malachi? These are some crazy looking nuts. <laughs> they, they are. <laughs> these things, they're actually called bunya nuts. Okay. And um, these ones are from southeast Queensland where their native range is, um, around Kingaroy and the Bunya Mountains. Mm -hmm. And they're actually a pine cone, they're a pine nut. This is sort of, this is actually the pine cone. Yeah. And inside there's the biggest pine nut in the world, sort of <laughs> literally. Um, if you have a look, to get them open they'll actually fall out of the tree. These are a range of size, so we've got small to good size, and then they get bigger to so like basketball size. Wow, okay. Like huge, ten, up to 10 kilos. And they'll fall and they'll fall and be mature generally around the time they fall as long as they don't get blown down. Mm -hmm. And so inside, if we have a look at that one, <laughs> let's see what we find. I am failing. Yeah, just be mindful whenever you handle them because they're spiky as. Their leaves and the, the, the fruit itself on the cone can be pretty spiky. So inside, we open it up. Oh wow. Look at that. And then we've got these little little packets. Like they're pre-packaged. So each pine nut comes in its own packaging. Yep. And you can just peel it. Some of them are easier than others, but just break it and pull out the pine nut. Yep. Yeah. Now that's a good example. See that one looks a bit small? Yeah. So sometimes I find that they're underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. and that one's like immature. But you'll find Better in, ones. Yeah, you can actually see how many there are. We've got there's one here. This one's just a, I think this is a small one. Yep. But then if, as we go through, we could harvest. So let's open a few. This one's bigger. So that's a proper full-size yep. cone. Yeah, that's, that's lovely. We can go through, yeah, collect. Already I've got like a handful. Well, together we've got a handful. They've only taken a very short time to collect. And that, that was actually a big part of their traditional use. Okay. in that native range by the old people was, is basically how easily we're sitting down gathering nuts. nuts like really quickly and easily we just pick them up off the ground yeah um they, they there's so much quantity of these in certain times of the year that people came from all around australia or all around uh, within hundreds of kilometers mm -hmm. of southeast queensland to come and enjoy the bunya nut harvest yeah and there would be yeah just people would the old people would would eat these things and celebrate the the plenty times. Yeah, mm, yeah. Cool. So they're like pretty high calorie. It's pretty high calorie food for low effort. Oh, like you're saying. Totally. So uh, one tree can drop more than what we see here. Wow. And in one cone, in one uh, cone itself, you can have up to a hundred nuts if it's a mature cone. Yeah. So you imagine a hundred of these, and all you have to do is pick it up off the ground, pull it out, and then cook it. Mm -hmm. And we've got a very tasty um, bush food that's yeah. available at certain times of the year. Yep. And easy to transport too once you've peeled everything away. That's right, well, you're not carrying this big yeah. heavy heavy nut around. Yeah, we've got these little cones that, um, they're still in a kernel so they're pretty safe to transport like that because yep. that's like the hard shell. Inside there, there's, a, there's the actual nut itself and the kernel of that nut which is edible, raw or cooked. Okay. Um, so they're quite versatile. They're, they're gluten free as well, so people also do a bit of gluten free cooking with them. Okay. Pretty cool. And um, we can get get that out of there we might even have a look at it raw and then i think we might cook that up mm -hmm. and on the fire yeah it sounds good Sweet. do you prefer them um cooked to raw i do yeah yeah, yeah. raw is nice but there's no flavor like that uh, it's totally different flavor mm -hmm. and in my for my sort of taste they're almost potatoy and starchy when they're of, raw and um, when they're cooked actually oh, when they're yeah cooked. when they're raw it's like a sort of um almondy oh, sort yeah. of crunchy yeah. and then cooked it sort of just changes completely like sort of potato when it's raw and cooked, not that you yeah. raw, obviously. But, no. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. So okay. it's um, yeah. So we might have a look at getting into one, and um, then we can cook some. Let's do it. Yeah. So we'll crack open one now. They can be a bit of an issue. I'll just crack it a bit. That's probably the easiest way. And that's a, a healthy nut, the white flesh. Yep. So we can pull that part of the kernel out, and this here is just edible raw. Or we can yet cook the whole thing. Okay, cool. Definitely. So try some? Yeah, mm -hmm. try some. I really like them. Some people prefer them raw. Okay. Others um, like Is there like them nutritional, cooked. there's probably no difference. You're still getting the same amount of nutritional value eating them raw. I cooked. imagine so. Mm. They're good. Mm, um, <laughs> yeah. Tastes a bit like almonds and coconut. Yeah. Coconut, yeah. Coconut. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that. Not as sweet. So we've eaten some raw, um, let's try them cooked. What's the technique for 
cooking them. Cool. Well, from my research, the old people, when they're cooking just with a fire, like an open fire, they would give it a bit of a crack, just like this. Yeah. And, you know, just make sure it splits. See, when I hit it, I didn't really hit it that hard. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it just did split there. And that's going to allow any gas that builds up to escape. Mm -hmm. The hazard is, if you, uh, and I've done this before, if you put them in whole and then then go to crack them to open them, yeah. they can like sort of let off a bit of steam, uh -huh. which is, um, yeah, which could go bad. So yeah, pressure cooking there. That's right. <laughs> Little crack. Yep, there's a bit of a vent. Yeah. And we just go along and now they're ready to be roasted. Great. Mm. Sweet. So we've got um, hot coals here. We just kind of revived the fire from last night. Yeah. Ready for some bunya breakfast nuts. If you're doing them in the oven, you know, it's pretty normal 180 sort of degrees that I've uh -huh. experimented with, but there's plenty of recipes out there. But... So we don't want really hot coals. The ash is good in the sense that it, like a lot of open fire cooking, the ash will prevent a little bit of burning. Yeah. So if there was hot coals here, we could use that ash to try and prevent a bit of burning or prevent what we're trying to do is maintain a constant temperature prevent it heating up if it gets wind to it so we want to just maintain that nice heat yeah like a roasting temperature like you say like oven temperature exactly nice even heat because that ash is yeah it'll make that nice and even and i see a lot of people doing a lot of like fast forward like Three times three, four times three. So see how this one here has got a bit of a black discoloration there where it was in contact with a bit too much heat? Yeah. Um, obviously you don't want that over the whole thing, but mm -hmm. a little bit's all right. Yeah. Oh, are they see ready the, yet? Oh, shiny. See, yeah, see the steam come off it? Yeah. That's definitely hot. We'll just see if it's enough. It should be. They are hot. See how this one's in like two halves and this side that was laying on the fire is quite um, potato-y and cooked Clear, yeah. whereas this side's really white still and, yeah. and it hasn't had enough heat so I reckon that's gonna that's telling us we need to roll them around a bit and leave them a little bit longer yep it's not too hot so we could probably leave them for another five or ten minutes and I don't think we're gonna overcook them Breakfast is up. I'm <laughs> Yum. They're so good. Oh. I think this is my favorite bush tucker. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. I even Macadamia's are pretty good. Better than grub. Yeah. You got grub more? Huh? I think so. But Maybe I haven't had enough mm. grubs. Mm. I've only had like one and a half grubs. I think the attraction with grubs though is they're available like, all year round. All the time. Mm. You're not going to have to fight with too many other people for them. Can't run away from you. <laughs> mm -hmm. They can be hard fishing though. Yeah. <laughs> True that. Mm. Oh, yeah, no, I think if I was to overall, I probably would agree they are probably my favourite. These guys? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's why I want to go. Thanks for tuning in to Free Range Sailing this week. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. A special free range thank you to Malachi for sharing so freely of his knowledge and his family for their great hospitality for the time we were there. If you want to find out more about Malachi's business Rocky Instincts, we've placed links to his website, Facebook and Instagram page in the description to this video. This is your last chance to grab a free range sailing t-shirt or hoodie. The campaign will be ending on Sunday the 21st of July 2019. So if you still want one, please head over to our campaign now by clicking the link in the screen or heading to the link in the description of the video. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our videos and hit the notification button to stay up to date with all of our uploads and we'll see you next week.